The Lazarus Curse by John Cronshaw Jacob sat on a throne of shattered bones. His shroud hung black and red, hooded and flowing. A single gas lamp flickered behind him, casting shadows of dancing bones along the abandoned station walls. An empty beer can rolled from the platform's edge and clattered against the tracks. His court of rats scattered. Angelina. He held out a pewter cup for Angelina to pour his wine and ran a curled finger through her long red hair. Azrael has betrayed me for the last time. Angelina sighed. You betray each other. You are both driven by a lust for power. Jacob sipped the wine, considered Angelina's words, and placed the cup on the arm of the throne. I am the one. Turning to Angelina, he narrowed his eyes. I have many followers. It is only a matter of time. You both have many followers. You are moving towards a war that Lazarus will not tolerate. Jacob closed his eyes and steepled his fingers. Azrael's wings need to be clipped. Lazarus must know that only I can lead. Angelina offered him another sigh and poured more wine. Do not sigh at me, Angelina. Say what is on your mind. You're the same. You and Azrael are two pieces of the same puzzle. We are not the same, Jacob spat, slamming a fist down, bones splintering against his strength. You will only end each other. Jacob stared ahead and crushed the cup in his hand, feeling the metal bend to his will. Jacob gasped. What is it? I have been summoned. Jacob waited in silence, eyes downcast. He was on his knees, his nose touching the tiled floor. Unable to move, he listened to the scratchy rasp of Lazarus's breath surrounding him. Azrael appeared to Jacob's left. They both bowed and waited. No words, no greetings. We existed when we understood that we were one, Lazarus said. Each word was clipped, stifled, pained, each vowel like shifting soil, each consonant like scraping stones. Your pettiness has worn my patience to a gossamer thread. Jacob tried to wriggle, to squirm, to run, but he was paralyzed, held fast by Lazarus's will. We are one. We are dependent. Lazarus spat the last word, punctuating each syllable with a click of his skeletal fingers. It is time for your fable. Time for your lesson. Cold fire engulfed Jacob's body. His flesh quivered and curled as the flames buried into his being, tearing at the last threads of his soul. Then the pain ceased. Jacob, Azrael, you are cursed to end. You will expire if you do not feed on each other. You must learn the value of our brood. The stench of refuse and insects drifted by. Bones splintered between Jacob's fingers as he gripped the arms of his throne. We are going to war. We cannot live together like mutually dependent parasites. Angelina frowned. If Lazarus's curse is what you say, then you will both end. Your talk of war and conquest will be for naught. Lazarus, Jacob spat out the word. Something nudged him at the back of his mind, a pull towards his brother. He leaned forward, resting his elbows on his knees. His expression softened as he looked up at Angelina. No one tastes sweeter than you, he said. A sudden urge gripped him. He lurched forward, took Angelina by the wrist, sank his teeth into her flesh, and fed. What is this? he growled, choking on the blood. He jerked away and dropped Angelina's arm as trails of blood extended along the platform, pooling near the edge. What is it? I... Jacob rested his head in his hands. Your blood is wrong, he shot to his feet. I have to find Azrael. Maggots swarmed at the base of the throne while Azrael's flesh teemed with buzzing flies. Drained and rotting corpses lay around his throne. Human skin stretched across its back and sides. Dried pinks and browns twisted in strands that bowed and stretched with Azrael's every movement. A fluorescent light tube flickered in the tunnel leading to the platform, casting a cold blue light over the scattered dead. Jacob stood before Azrael, his arms outstretched, 
his wrists gaping and dripping with blood. Brother, Lazarus's curse is our only enemy now. I offer a truce between us. Let there be no blood spilled, save for our mutual feeding. The throne creaked as Azrael sat back. A cloud of flies darted this way and that, eddying in a macabre waltz. He held Jacob's gaze with an icy glare. Agreed. Mark my words, Jacob. There will be a truce, but only until this curse is lifted. As you say, brother. Jacob bowed his head in assent. Silence hung between them like a shroud. After a long moment, Azrael stood, tore at his right wrist with his teeth, and offered it to Jacob. Together. Together. They leaned down to each other's gaping wounds and fed, sucking the blood with silent gulps as the flies hummed around them. You taste, they both said, their words trailing off as the faint hint of a smile crept along their faces. Jacob stirred when Azrael crawled into his bed. The flies hovered outside the chamber, waiting with the rats. Send your thrall away, Azrael said, pushing Angelina aside with a shove. She is no thrall. He made no further protest when Angelina skulked away. They bit into each other's wrists again and fed. I hate this, they said. Jacob and Azrael met on neutral ground, a tunnel used by rats as a graveyard. Rodent corpses carpeted the ground, some still bloated and crawling with maggots, others no more than dusty husks. Bones shattered beneath their feet as they walked. They took a moment to feed on each other and then stood back to back. We must fight this curse, brother, said Jacob. Azrael said nothing. We should test the curse. Azrael turned to him and met his gaze in the gloom. A rat entered the tunnel along the track opposite Jacob. It stood on its hind legs, sniffed the air, locked eyes with Jacob, turned, and scurried away. Well? Jacob asked. Well what? Well. Do you have a plan? Jacob nodded. The air changed when Angelina nailed down the final sheet of thick wood. Gone were the ebbs and flows of rushing air that marked the rhythm of the underground trains. All around was dry and still. Jacob curled into a tight ball and felt Angelina return to his bed. Do you wish to feed? Jacob gave a weak nod and Angelina offered her wrists. Leaning forward, he tried to feed. He pushed down the urge to gag, to vomit. He turned away at Angelina's hurt expression. I... It will pass. Angelina said nothing. The pull to Azrael became an obsession a twitching, a yearning twisting at every facet of Jacob's mind. Jacob, Angelina whispered. What is it? Jacob's hands and feet were heavy and stiff. He looked down to see they had turned to granite. Summon Azrael, now! Azrael's arms and feet were the same bluish-green stone as Jacob's when he arrived, limping. The flies avoided his hands. Send away your thrall. Go, whispered Jacob. Angelina left. Weak and gasping, the pair found flesh halfway up each other's right arm and fed. An iridescent glow surrounded them for a brief moment, and they found themselves bowing before Lazarus, their noses pressed against the floor and their stone arms anchored to the tiled floor as if bound by chains. Lazarus let out a rattling, wheezing laugh. You dared to defy me? You thought you could lift the curse? No. Lazarus clicked his fingers. You were supposed to learn a lesson, but instead you worked against me. No. Do not lie to me. You instructed your thralls to keep you apart. And now you are here. A luminous green light pulsed around them and starvation floored the brothers. Pain tore through their insides, a boiling, searing pain that writhed and contorted from within. Their screams did not leave their mouths, could not. All Jacob and Azrael could do was feed. Jacob called to Angelina for wine, but before he could utter a single word, the petrification returned and spread across his limbs like setting ice. I hate this, said Jacob, his voice muffled as he fed. Azrael agreed, mumbling through Jacob's armpit. We should end. Yes, Azrael stopped feeding for a brief moment. 
we should end Lazarus. With their bodies half petrified, Jacob and Azrael summoned their minions. Stone crackled along their skin as they moved from feeding to giving short blasts of orders. Jacob leaned up and eyed his lieutenants. We are in alliance. A tendril of stone crawled along his thigh, twisting like ivy, and stopped only when he returned to feed. You must end Lazarus. Azrael repeated the words to his own lieutenants and returned to feeding. Jacob lifted his head weakly. Take us to him. An army of rats and flies carried Jacob and Azrael to Lazarus while the battle raged. Flames and arrows flew in all directions, arcing in and out of time, extinguishing everything. The minions fell by the thousands as Jacob and Azrael crawled towards Lazarus, their knees and elbows scraping stone against stone. All the while they continued to feed. What is the meaning of this? Lazarus gasped, his flailing arms rendering him powerless. Jacob and Azrael dragged themselves forward and separated. They lunged at Lazarus with a deafening scream and sank their teeth into his arms. Lazarus writhed as they fed. They pulled on his core, tore at him, his bones bending and splitting. Their arms and legs turned soft, fleshy and bony, the stone retreating along their bodies like the first thaws of spring. Fools, you may end me, but I will make the curse stronger. A brilliant burst of black light emanated from Lazarus, filling the chamber with the screams of a billion holocausts. The walls around them shattered and crumbled. Lazarus felt a dust as a beam of sunlight penetrated from above. Jacob and Azrael shared a smile as a gust of air blew Lazarus away in a cloud of ash. We are victorious. And now, the curse is lifted. They looked around at the scattered corpses of their armies, their crumbling empire, and the swarming flies and rats returning to their masters, and shared another smile. Jacob looked down at his hand and offered it to his brother. Azrael's smile fell away. What is it? Before Azrael could answer, Jacob's eyes widened at the petrification spreading along his body. The curse? Azrael raised his stone hands. Their bodies stiffened as the petrification moved up past their thighs. A grim smile passed over Azrael's lips. I fear this will not end us. We will be trapped in stone for... His words stopped as his jaw became granite. Jacob nodded. Angelina, take us to the light. End us before it's too late. Angelina crawled over to her master, her lover her body wrecked with contusions and fractured bones. As you wish. Jacob's body stiffened as the petrification continued up his spine, engulfing his ribs and twisting his shoulders. Angelina dragged Jacob and Azrael towards the sunlight, towards their end. The flies retreated and the rats scattered. As they reached the light, they remained trapped in stone forever. The End Thanks for listening. Subscribe now so you don't miss more stories. You can find out more about John Cronshaw and his work and claim your free starter library by visiting johncronshaw.com. The Lazarus Curse is copyright 2017 by John Cronshaw. All rights reserved. This is a work of fiction. Names, characters, business, events, and incidents are the products of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, or actual events is purely coincidental.